everybody, I'm Mike DeRoche from Sony Electronics at NAB 2013 and I want to walk you through um, some new products in the XDCAM Optical and EX lineup or in the XDCAM family and also give you a reminder of maybe some things that you may or may not be aware about uh, in the lineup as well. Um, many of those are the things that you may already be aware about, the PDW-HR1 uh, clamshell deck uh, and then also the standard drives in the, the XDCAM station. But a couple of features that we actually provide that may be really helpful for what it is you're trying to do. Now, many of you may be aware of the optical disc format. The one format that you can shoot to as a file and actually afford to keep it on the shelf as an archive and therefore your edit masters can be exactly bit for bit the same as your camera masters. Well, not everybody is using this and so some that might be using both, uh, you have an option like the PDW HR1 MK1 laptop clamshell deck that can run on AC, DC battery. It records to optical disc media, but it has card slots on the side where you can take your S by S media and actually slap it in there, convert it over to the optical disc media and actually walk away with an archive. That's, that's really big for multimedia um, or multi-format shooting shows. Another thing is that that deck can be used as an ISO recorder. Many of our cameras have an HDSDI remote interface where you can actually turn that on as a camera menu, turn it on in the deck, and then maybe you're shooting to a, a card-based camera in the field, but you don't want to have to manage that. You can actually rent one of these or buy it outright and use this as an ISO recorder that at the point of acquisition, when you trigger your camera, it triggers the deck into the mode. And therefore, rather than walking away with MP4 files on your card or MXF on a card, you can actually have it moved over and record at the point of acquisition to an optical disc. That's actually great. And a lot of people are not really necessarily aware of this. On top of that, you can use this disc or the, the, uh, the drive as a, an ASI broadcast interface unit. So if you're using uh, the, the deck for maybe um, uh, microwave unit, uh, applications, there's an option for ASI that's around $4,000 roughly, and it can take it in and out or convert it output to a 14 to 44 megabit uh, rate. That's dial in, you can dial that in. And now the extensions of this is dramatic. It's uh, not a whole lot of money. It's, in fact, it's actually less, less money than an actual optical disc deck itself, um, but with a built-in display, something that can serve multiple purposes on one rental uh, price at the same time, but the utilization is very high for uh, reality programming. Now, another device, the XDCAM station. That's this guy here, and probably the, the least known devices in the lineup. It notice that this device here, the PD2000 specifically, there's three different models. One of them is cards only, the other two are disc and card, but all three of them have an internal drive, whether it be hard drive or solid state. The one I want to really talk to you about here is the PD2000 model that has card slot, or I'm sorry, disc bay, card slots, and an internal half a terabyte solid state drive. Now, what is the value of that? Literally, it is five units in one as well. I say that about a lot of our products, but the flexibility is key and it's important that's understood. Gigabit Ethernet capability as well. The ability to record in and play out and transfer your files and make them available to edit systems at the same time is huge. The PD2000, if you have version 2.0 uh, software or higher, we're actually around 2.3 at the moment as of NAB 2013. But you can imagine this. You have the ability to record in a file and you can actually access it via editorial or review it or play it back. As long as you have at least 10 seconds in your buffer or record to the media, you can now access this. In an editorial space, you can do, with you're working with Avid, you can do an AMA link to the internal storage here as well as your media that's hanging off here, as well as your disk that's in there. It all shows up as one large bin and you can point to that as if it's a removable drive. It's literally there that you can put down to your sequence. And as you're recording those files in, as long as you have that 10 seconds or more, you can start to AMA link to it and edit with it before the recording is even finished. Now think about this, you're doing a line cut. You can actually be recording to this. You can now FTP those files into this device as well and copy it off to the disk at the same time. But if you're FTP in that content, typically in FTP you have to wait for all of it to be there before you can start to access it. The same is true with this device in the sense that you have growing file support and immediate accessibility once you've got those 10 seconds. So let's say that you're doing a shoot in New York. You basically take your raw content, pop it into here, you're going to send that content back to LA where you're running production. You can be FTPing those files back to another one of these devices in LA and I'll already start to AMA edit that in your Avid system once you have 10 seconds of it back at the unit in LA. So, those that like to do dual copies, which you can certainly do, you can take the, the disk out of here, go to another deck, Ethernet, transfer those files over, and now you have a bit-for-bit -bit clone on your, on your disk, that's fine, but now you can utilize the extensibility of Ethernet networking and the SIFS interface here. So if you're working with Premiere, it's a SIFS drive. It shows up as a removable media device. 
it's an appliance that allows you hard drive access, editorial relief and, and sharing, as well as one input and one output at the same time. You also could be recording to internal drive and go to the disc and record at the same time. So you can be recording and get a backup at the same time, which is huge. The devices run all the way from twenty to forty thousand uh, dollars, but the extensibility and flexibility is huge in the sense that one light item on a rental item can be used twenty hours out of the day. So that's the XCAM station. Two new devices that we're actually uh, we're uh, com either come out with soon or actually already delivering are the PMW fifty, which is this guy. It's a very portable device that supports both UDF and FAT32 file systems. So you can put a card inside your bay here and you can actually play it out, HDSDI, SDSDI, HDMI or composite, and you can record in SDI. Um, no nine pin control, but the fact is it's, it's a low cost, lightweight base station. That the biggest thing here for me is you actually have a USB connect where you can just do a, a customized button, one push, I have my card in here and it lays off to a hard drive without the use of a computer. That's huge. So now it's this device running on a, on a battery or on a power, a power connecting out, but also lay that off to an external record that you can then walk away with as another source. That's very, very helpful. Now, this guy down here, this will be coming out later this summer, again, as of NAB 2013. This is the PMW 1000. This is a, an S by S card only device. It's basically a nine pin controllable editing deck that you can review your content. You have all your inputs and outputs that you would expect in a traditional broadcast deck. But what's important for me is it has the XAVC codec support. So not just DV cam on the standard F side and the MPEG long got formats of the XD cam family, whether it be MP4 or FAT32 uh, FAT or MXF wrapped UDF, but you also have the 10 bit codec XAVC, which is widely used now in our F5 and F55 cameras. So as a playable device to be able to play back that content quickly, including the high speed formats, which is what a lot of people are wanting to do on the F5 and the F55 is shoot in high speed and HD. You can pop it into here. Now, it doesn't support 4K, but for the XAVC using uh, camera operators with the F5 and F55, this is your deck to play that out. And this is the PMW 1000 unit. So we have the 1000, we have the, five, or the, the 50, we have the HR1 for multi applications, we have the XDCAM station, widely used today, but a lot of features that people should really leverage that they're not necessarily aware of. Also, in terms of third-party applications, keep in mind, if you're an Avid user, there's a great tool that's out there by NL Tech called uh, SAT Auto Ingest. A lot of production companies are using it to take the, the, the benefits of working with the optical disc system is anytime you record to this, whether it be in the, the decks or the portable decks or in the cameras, when you record to high-res video, you're also recording a low-res proxy frame-accurate version to the disc media at all times. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you could take that low-res video and marry it to the high-res audio from that media into your edit system, and therefore increase your import speeds of getting that content in, but minimize the storage capacities online? Well, NL Tech's, NL Tech's SAT AI software can do that, and that's something we've been showing here in our booth at NAB 2013, as well as last year and, and previous years. Widely accepted with Avid users, but something you should probably take a look at, and that's available at nltech.com. Now. For more information on the XDCAM line of products, or all of our professional products for that matter, feel free to go to sony.com slash professional. That's it for this section. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the field.